Oh wait, do I have to introduce myself again? Do that again. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> my name is Natalie Spina. My name is Lynn Spearman. My name is Maya Santano. My name is Juliana Coleman. I'm Melissa Wynn. And this is my poem, Rise. The sun beams through the curtains and blinds. The room is illuminated with orange and yellow, the rays directed to our faces. I squint as I rise, losing the darkness only sleep can give me. I turn to my left to see them, lost in the land of slumber. Their hair is a nest, its materials made of sweet nothings, cringy song lyrics, love poems, and everything else I've stuck in there. I glance to the face I've seen so many times before, but yet again I slightly gasp at the sight of them. I meet their eyes as I lay next to them, feeling their slow breaths against my face. Even under the plush white blanket, I can tell they're curled up in a ball, their bodies steadily moving up and down. I take in the scenery once again before rising from my bed trying my best to not creak the floorboards. I head to the window. Buildings upon buildings lay outside. Cars are racing down the road and people are enjoying a morning jog. Everything is moving quickly, but we are not. I hear shuffling from the bed, the blankets moving and the mattress creaking. Morning, they say, rubbing the sun out their eyes. Is it, is it time to get up? Not yet, you can sleep a little longer. I am made from lost stardust trying to find their way back home. The scars on my skin create forgotten constellations. My mind is a shattered fragment of a once fearsome empire. The memories forge my words and the ruins guide my fears. My eyes are voids from distant realities, they see endless possibilities. And the trembles in my hands are from distant supernovas. Freedom looks like bare feet racing across grass, of tumbling and sliding, dirt and grass mixed into your hair, and under the glow of the summer sun you feel complete. Freedom sounds like the whoosh of an exhale, a sigh of release, of steady yourself, of the last moment drifting away as your lungs welcome another breath. Freedom feels like sprinting, like letting go, like twirling until you drop being able to capture the world in your outstretched arms. Freedom smells like wind, fire, rain, sparks, like the firm earth beneath you and the sky wisping away above. Natural, wild, whole. Freedom tastes like a laugh cresting over your tongue, a laugh that reverberates, unchained from its silence to spill from your mouth, bright and honest. Pure and angelic rows of feathers, lined up and down, littered across the wings spread open, ready to take flight. The few gold feathers stuck out among the white, glistening under the light, calling out to you like a charm. Angel wings, you called them. When you first witnessed them, soaring through the air, attached to a human-like being, you were enchanted. You've never seen wings so large, so elegant, as they carry the person with grace. You watched that person, no, that angel for days. You sat at the same spot every sunset, hidden between trees and bushes as you watched her fly around a waterfall. One day, you called out to her. Her wings folded, they bent and hunched over as if frightened, and she landed on her feet. Her wings, gorgeous as they were, were an unsatisfactory sight when folded up. She fled, running behind the waterfall on her two legs, rather than using the wings she was blessed with. She didn't fly after that. You thought she never would have, yet you returned to the same spot every day until a month later, she came again. She flew more cautiously, but still beautifully, as this time, she was making use of her wings. The next day, you moved forward. Only a little, but enough for your head to poke out. She noticed you again and did not speak. Instead, she flew. 
So alluringly, she flew. Her angel wings spread out, and she kept her eyes on you the whole time. However, you could not make eye contact with her. Instead, your focus was on her wings. Never could it be on anything else. Not the day after that, when you sat closer to her, your eyes remained fixated on her wings. Or the next day, when you sat close enough to dip your toes in the water. Even after months, when she approached you with a shy smile, her wings neatly tucked behind her back, they were all you could concentrate on. Even when eventually, you started visiting later, when the moon was shining brightly and the two of you hugged each other under the trees, it was not her face that you watched, not the rise and fall of her chest as she slept, or the intimacy you two shared, but her wings. The white feathers were beautiful, but the gold feathers bewitched you, shining under the moonlight. It was not her that you needed, but the wings. So, with the dagger, you dug. You carved and scraped into her skin until you found the bone of the wing. You ignored her screams, her cries, and desperate pleas for you to stop slicing closer. Finally, the wings were yours, yours to take home, yours to frame on your wall, yours to admire and watch any time you desired, not just sunset and after. Behind the glass you had encased them in, the gold feathers stuck out among the white, glistening under the light, calling out to you, like a charm. They were now your angel wings to imagine taking flight. The way she moved was silence even the sea. The sirens would cease their singing, the wind would halt, and the fish would stand still as she blessed the very ship she walked on. She moved with grace that wasn't known by man. Her elegance shone brighter than the cosmos above. Her messily sewn dress would flutter to the rhythm of her own design. Her hair was redder than blood. Her eyes bluer than sapphires in her jewelry. Her skin so porcelain, her strength unfathomable. She can steal your breath, that be by her beauty or her sword. I loved her. I loved her as I've never loved anyone. However, the wind blew and the ocean angered as it rippled. And our ship would swerve in the middle of nowhere. That, for certain, was something we were used to. But, as we called for land in desperation before the storm grew, on that day, her name no longer made me smile. It no longer made sense. And that's how I knew, with the wind blowing rapidly and wiping my tears, that it was only just a wish.